We hate each other, really, basically. You want to see your team win, get them three points. But if you start getting hassle, either from the way supporters of Blaze, something will blow. to Norwich and uh, he was young then, he was oh, about then he five stabbed. or six, and then he got stabbed. Football hooliganism has not and probably never will go away. The hooligan has more than his team's result to consider on a Saturday afternoon. He has his own. Hooliganism is a competition wherein groups construct a theatre of rivalry and in that theatre, there's capabilities for winning, drawing, and losing. They lost a uh, West Ham, West Ham petrol bomb them at uh, London Bridge. There's not much you can answer with that, can you? They didn't turn and run, and we did. So they, they call that a victory. But they don't call it a victory the following week when you go over there and. Turf mode, yeah. At a recent English league match, a police camera caught one fan firing a flare gun from the terraces into a crowd of rival supporters in the opposite stand. The first year they threw snooker balls at us, and the second year they threw a firebomb over, a Molotov cocktail. Um, but there was only a few West Ham out there anyway, so it didn't hit anybody, and they actually warmed their hands on the fire. So it was quite cold. But uh, that's what happened at Newcastle, St James's Park. Big Brother wants to also stop English fans like Mike Tyson, real name Donald Farrer, a Manchester City fan, from travelling abroad in a false passport and causing trouble. There's no doubt that the police clamped down and what the National Police Intelligence Unit do has had a major effect. Going away for three or four years was stupid. Going to prison for three or four years was stupid for a, a bit of hooliganism. And no one wants to get arrested at football now. If you get arrested for having a fight on a Saturday night in a pub, you get a £50 fine. You get arrested for fighting outside a football ground straight away. They bang you away for six to 12 months. I've been actually warned by my solicitor to stay away from the football next year because the police have singled me out for special treatment. I've been warned I'm going to be apprehended at every opportunity they get at any football match, whether I be committing a crime or whether I wouldn't be committing a crime, they're going to apprehend me. Why? I'm a member of the BMP and the police intelligence think that I'm trying to recruit members to the BMP through the football. How far can architecture tame the bad boys of football? New all seater stadia, envisaged by the Taylor Report, may cramp the style of the hooligan or add to their weaponry. The £16 million new den at Millwall incorporates all 72 Taylor recommendations, but it was not designed with a dry moat to stop the moronic hordes from invading the pitch, nor did it have the unique Wembley-style horizontal moat fencing designed to slow down the troublemakers so that they can be apprehended by the stewards and police. But when the pitch invasions did occur at Birmingham, Manchester City and Millwall, the suspended sentences handed out by the Football Association could hardly be considered a serious deterrent. Uh, 
I think the way that clubs treat, uh, have treated the supporters over the years, uh, that inheritance is going to be with us for a long time, even if we go to all seat the stadiums and uh, the food gets get, get improves and the toilets improve, the facilities generally improve. There will still be this, uh, th this attitude that the clubs have had towards the fans, which create football hooliganism in many ways. They seem to despise, and for many, many years, have despised the people that pay their wages. And uh, there will always be an element of young men uh, on those terraces that resent that. And that actually adds to the, 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 uh, the, the amount of conflict, the amount of violence that you actually see. I think the mentality of sitting in seats is different from the mentality of standing. And there are problems, not all seats are safe. Uh, people stand on some seats, some people use seats as weapons, all that will happen. But fundamentally, I, I believe the atmosphere is changing because of seats in a way it's never changed before and can only work against hooliganism. I won't get rid of it altogether. Nothing will. The Football Association, the Football League, the Football Trust and the National Central Intelligence Service all refused to take part in this documentary. They said any coverage of hooliganism would only promote the problem, whereas they hoped that it was dying away. Perhaps they have their head in the sand, because hooliganism has been here since Roman times and is likely to stay. The hooliganism that is going on is being played down by the football authorities because they want to present the game in as a, as a family activity and, and, a, and a safe activity, understandably. But every now and then it is going to erupt. For those people who want to create some passive nirvana, the lessons we've learned from history and anthropology uh, are going to be very depressing because young men will always get together, find an opposition and indulge in rowdy behaviour. It's a young men's game, basically, still. And every few years there's going to be another 15, 20, 16-year-olds that suddenly realise they're big enough to, to take maybe one punch and give one back. So there'll always probably be another generation. <laughs>